Hey everyone, what's going on? If you're new to what I talk about on this channel, I talk about how our mainstream media, our sports leagues, our told history, and also the things that go on in our daily life are all scripted by a system of ancient knowledge. There's a practice of Jewish mysticism that is called Kabbalah, and within Kabbalah there's a belief that God created the world by merging the letter with the number with the word. And there's what is called gematria, which is the practice of coding numbers into words and phrases. And every single day, there are people in this world who understand this knowledge and they use it. And they can, they use it to control our media. They use it to control the sports leagues and so on. And if you pay enough attention to the things that are going on, you can figure out how they are theming it as well. And since 2015, I've been talking about this, the Nebraska Cornhuskers and how they're synced up to the Teen Wolf symbolism, the movie Teen Wolf. And if you go back and watch the movie Teen Wolf, there's numerous times where they have Nebraska Cornhusker stuff in the background of the movie, and it really makes no sense because the movie's not set or filmed in Nebraska. I mean, there's palm trees in the movie. And, you know, it, it really makes no sense why there's Nebraska Cornhusker stuff in there. And he even joins the school play about the Civil War. And it makes sense because the Cornhuskers play in Lincoln, Nebraska, and Abraham Lincoln. And anyway, in 2015, during the NBA All-Star Week, there it began over this festival of Lupercalia, which is a Roman festival where they celebrate and sacrifice the wolf. And it's a three-day festival from February 13th to the 15th. And the NBA All-Star Week began on the 13th. And that night, Andrew Wiggins of the Minnesota Timberwolves became the MVP of the Rising Star Challenge. And he was 19 years old, so he was a teen wolf. And the next night, his teammate, Zach Levine, who was also 19 years old, a teen Minnesota Timberwolf, won the slam dunk contest doing the Space Jam dunk. And there's much, much more that goes along with it. It's connected to UCLA. Russell Westbrook was the MVP of the All-Star Game. And Zach Levine went to UCLA. Russell Westbrook went to UCLA. Kevin Love, think about Valentine's Day, Zach Levine. Kevin Love was traded for Andrew Wiggins to the Cleveland Cavaliers, right? And Kevin Love went to UCLA. And... Later that year, Nebraska had a terrible record in football, and they got to go play in the Foster Farms Bowl, and they just so happened to play against UCLA. And there were numerous other things that were in relation to it. Also, later that year, we got the Kevin Garnett, in February that year even, Kevin Garnett made his return back to the Minnesota Timberwolves. Kevin Garnett was the original Teen Wolf, right? Minnesota Timberwolf. Then later that year, we got the death of Flip Saunders. And then that was Kevin. And then Kevin Garnett finished that season. And that was his uh, final season or whatever. But anyway, if you've been following what I have been talking about, earlier this year, we had on January 20th, we had the Super Wolf Blood Moon, right? And I talked about all of this stuff for years about how Nebraska is connected to this Moses theme because Moses freed the slaves just like Lincoln and they play in the sea of red just like the Kansas City Chiefs who lost on that same day as the wolf moon and their mascot is the wolf and so on but on during all of this I, I talked about all of this stuff connected to Nebraska and the Patriots made the Super Bowl by the touchdown scored by Rex Burkhead, who was a, you know, former Nebraska Cornhusker. And the Rams made the Super Bowl because of the kick by Greg Zerline, who was from Lincoln, Nebraska. And a Ram is also, also connected to Moses because Moses bred in the age of Aries, which is the Ram. Something I was talking about clear back in September 
to watch the Rams on making the Super Bowl than the Rams did make the Super Bowl. But there's all of this stuff that has been connected to Nebraska. And now we have the Nebraska floods that are going on. Later this year, we have the corn moon that is going to be on September 14th, which is the day Francis Scott Key wrote the national anthem. And, you know, think about all of the kneeling stuff during the national anthem that has been important over the last few years. And that's why Nebraska played in the Foster Farms Bowl that year when I noticed all the Teen Wolf symbolism because that's in San Francisco. That's the same place where Colin Kaepernick originally knelt and much, much more. But anyway, let's move on from all of this. So now the Nebraska Cornhuskers are hiring Fred Hoiberg as their coach. They did this on March 30th. And this guy is just super sicked up to the wolf symbolism. You know, he finished his playing career with the Minnesota Timberwolves. Then he became the vice president of operations for the Timberwolves before becoming a head coach. And he was the coach of the Chicago Bulls before he got fired. And the Chicago Bulls just so happened to have Zach Levine on their team. And they also have Denzel Valentine on their team. And Denzel Valentine. The same day that Zach Levine won the slam dunk contest as a Teen Wolf, Denzel Valentine made the game winner for Michigan State on Valentine's Day. And now he plays for the Bulls and he wears number 45 and Valentine's the 45th day of the year. And, you know, much, much more. That's why Michael Jordan wore the number 45 because it was connected to Valentine's Day. He also wore the number 12 once on Valentine's Day in 1990. And he scored 49 points in the Bulls' 49th game, and Chicago Bulls equal 49 in Gematria. But just think about it. This guy connected to the Minnesota Timberwolves. Now he's coaching the Nebraska Cornhuskers. And if you go from the last day of Lupercalia to the day they hired him, it's one month and 16 days. And the word Teen Wolf equals 116 in what is called Gematria. The practice of coding numbers into words and phrases. We'll just type it out for you here. Teen Wolf. Also, Wikipedia, they they always leave little things that are wrong that are connected. And they said that he got fired on December 5th, which is 116 days before. But it was actually the December 3rd. But look at Teen Wolf here. Teen Wolf 116 and Fred Hoiberg gets, you know, signed to the Nebraska Cornhuskers 116 days before or after the last day of Lupercalia. And the reason I did the last day was because the University of Nebraska was founded on this, the last day of Lupercalia, February 15th. Also, what's significant is Hoiberg was the 52nd pick in the draft when he was drafted to the NBA. and Cornhuskers equal 52. The word wolf equals 52 and also 56. If you write out Fred Hoiberg, it equals 56. And if you write out his full name, it equals 239, which is the 52nd prime. So both his, you know, shortened name and full name are synced up to the word wolf. If you remember, three games after he was fired by the Bulls, the Bulls had their worst loss ever. When they lost to the Celtics, and they lost by 56 points. If you had out worst loss, it equals 56. It was three games later. If you had out the word three, it equals 56. Just like the word wolf. Just like Fred Hoiberg. Kevin Garnett, the original Teen Wolf, his name equals 56 in Gematria. And, you know, he was traded back to the T-Wolves for Thaddeus Young. That equals 56 in Gematria. The first game back for him with the Teen Wolves was the... 56th day of the year and in his rookie season they lost 56 games even when he was a teen wolf the name of the teen wolf in the movie is scott howard scott howard equals 56 he's played by michael j fox that equals 56 this year on the day of the super wolf moon the minnesota timberwolves beat the phoenix suns Phoenix Suns equal 56, and they beat them with 116 points, right? 
Teen Wolf equals 116. So do T-Wolves. T-Wolves also equal 116, and Lupercalia begins 116 days before Michael J. Fox's birthday. Even the day that he was picked up then by the Nebraska Cornhuskers, maybe you can't see it here, but the Chicago Bulls lost, and they got their 56 loss of the season even. What are the odds of that? Same day that Fred Hoiberg gets picked up, the Chicago Bulls get their 56 loss of the season. The guy that he replaced is Tim Miles, who's 52 years old right now. Tim Miles, right? Remember, Wolf equals 52. Him and Fred Hoiberg's birthdays are 56 days apart. What are the odds of that? 56 days apart, Fred Hoiberg equals 56. Tim Miles and Gematria equals 100 and 116, just like Teen Wolf. Also, think about all the flooding in Nebraska that's going on right now, right? Nebraska flooded. Just after the Super Bowl, that was just super connected to Nebraska. That was all caused by the, the bomb cyclone, right? The winter storm, the bomb cyclone. That's what led to all the flooding. Think about Fred Hoiberg, who was, he's famous for being the Iowa State cyclone. And, you know, just to reiterate some things here, if you think this is crazy, Fred Hoiberg wore the number 32 when he played for Iowa State. If you write out ISU, it equals 32. If you write out Iowa State, it equals 32. If you write out Cyclone, it equals 32. They play in Ames, Iowa, that equals 32. And when he was an NBA player, he even retired when he was 32 years old. And he was wearing number 32 when he played for the Minnesota Timberwolves. I mean, you just can't even make that up, right? All coded by the numbers, all synced up to the number 32 here. And the theme with this, though, is all about Teen Wolf. Even when Fred Hoiberg got fired, the Bulls were 5-19, and 19, which is interesting because Kevin Garnett's birthday is May 19th, 5-19. Also in regards to Kevin Garnett, think about how he left the T-Wolves to go play with the Boston Celtics. He even wore number 21 with the T-Wolves, and then he wore the number 5 for Boston, right? 2-1-5, a lot like that last day of Lupercalia even. But there's some interesting riddles that are going on here. Every single year, it seems like there's this riddle with the Houston Rockets that I document. And then they end up not winning or whatever. But I'll talk about the Boston Celtics here in a second. But the final game that Fred Hoiberg coached with the Bulls was against the Houston Rockets. Then the day that he was fired, the T-Wolves played the Rockets. And the final game that he coached was on December 1st. And on that day, the T-Wolves played the Boston Celtics. And then remember, after he was fired, the Boston Celtics were the team who beat the Bulls by 56 points. The numbers sinking up to Wolf and whatnot. So, just an interesting little narrative with the Houston Rockets and the Boston Celtics. But... There's also a narrative with Kevin Garnett and the Philadelphia 76ers and a lot of what I was talking about in 2015 and how it's synced up to Philadelphia and earthquakes. And Kevin Garnett was traded back to the Minnesota Timberwolves for Thaddeus Young, who also played for the 76ers and he wore the number 21. And... That just sticks out because Kevin Garnett was all about 12 and 21. And I've been documenting a whole bunch of stuff about 12 and 21 recently with this Big Bang Theory stuff. I have this video here where I talk about Sheldon's favorite number and the number 73. And he mentions how the 12th prime number is 37 and the 21st prime number is 73. And they're both reflections of each other, right? So... These numbers 12 and 21 were important to what I've recently been documenting about. And it, it sounds crazy, but these stories that are going on within the mainstream media, they are all truly interrelated. That's what a lot of Kabbalah is about, the how everything is connected. You know, if you go watch the TV show called Touch, you will understand. He talks about this red string that's tied around everybody's, you know, an invisible red string that's tied around everybody's ankle. And things are meant to, to touch at certain times, and 
he can see the way that the code works and he can make them touch so more positive things happen instead of negative things. But, you know, anyway, like Kevin Garnett, he played for the Minnesota Timberwolves for 12 seasons wearing the number 21. And his rookie season was also the same year that Flip Saunders became the head coach. And Flip Saunders became the head coach on, I'm trying to think what day it was, on the 21st game of the season. And he then he later got fired by the T-Wolves on 2-12. Right, a number that looks like 21 and 12. The the previous season before Kevin Garnett became the Teen Wolf there, Minnesota won 21 games and they finished 12th. And Kevin Garnett's best friend, Malik Seeley, he even has like a, I can't remember what it is. He died at going to Kevin Garnett's birthday party and he died in a supposed car accident later that night on May 20th. But his, his birthday was 2-1, and he wore number 21 when he played for St. John's in uh, college and whatnot. There's just all kinds of 12 and 21 stuff that was going on with Kevin Garnett. And just before Flip Saunders died, I documented about how we got the death of Moses Malone and also the death of Daryl Dawkins, and they're both connected to the 76ers. And... Moses Malone was the first player out of high school to play in the ABA, and Daryl Dawkins was the first player out of high school to play in the NBA. And, you know, then we get the death of Flip Saunders, and Kevin Garnett comes back to the Minnesota Timberwolves. Kevin Garnett, you know, out of high school, just like Kobe Bryant. Kobe Bryant, also a Philadelphia native. Also think about this year in regards to Jimmy Butler going to the 76ers. You know, there, there's something important to that. Jimmy Butler, also the former Chicago Bull, right? So, it makes sense. Also, Flip Saunders, the, the guy that he replaced was Bill Blair, who is 76 years old right now. So, there's something interesting with 76ers and Philadelphia. And... What really sticks out to me a lot is how a long time ago I documented about how Flip Saunders, he announced that he had his cancer on the 223rd day of the year, and then Andrew Wiggins' birthday was 223, and I can't even remember what it was. There was his name. Let me look it up really quick. Philip, what's Flip Saunders? Is that equal 223? Can't remember what it was. Maybe his real name, Daniel Philip. Can't remember what it was. I should go back and look it up, but there was this a big thing, and he announced his cancer on August 11th, which is this big day that we've been talking about with the Jewish feast day of Tisha B'av and the destruction of the two temples and. Philadelphia is really important to the third temple because the Comcast Center in Philadelphia has the black cube on the top of it, and the black cube supposedly represents the New Jerusalem. And I've talked about how Hulk Hogan is born on August 11th, and he got his revenge against Earthquake at the Spectrum in Philadelphia. And... The reason that's important is because the year that Kevin Garnett came into the NBA, that was when the 76ers played their final game at the Spectrum. And this year, the NBA All-Star Week just so happened to be held in Charlotte, the team that Mike, Michael Jordan owns, and the, the arena is called the Spectrum Center. And in 2015, Michael Jordan was really, really important to all of this. Zach Levine did the Space Jam dunk wearing the Michael Jordan jersey. And Michael Jordan was 52 years old. And the, remember the word wolf equals 52 and also 56. And Michael Jordan turned 56 years old this year. In 2015, we got the birth of Princess Charlotte on the date of 5 slash 2 even. We also had the 141st Kentucky Derby. And 
that was on 5-2, and it was all about 52. American Pharaoh had won, but the 141st Kentucky Derby is important because the 141st prime is 8-11, a lot like August 11th. Even in NASCAR, you know, Kyle Busch got injured that year and then later came back and won, but he, he made his comeback in Charlotte, and his name equals 52, and his birthday is 5-2. It was just really, really important. So it's important that this year the NBA All-Star Week was held and, you know, and it even was the all-star game, I believe, was on Michael Jordan's birthday, even his 56th birthday. And it was held at the Spectrum Center. And Kevin Garnett's rookie season just so happened to be the last season that the 76ers would play at the Spectrum. And Flip Saunders announces his cancer on August 11th. Earlier in the year, I also documented a whole bunch about Allen Iverson again. And Allen Iverson, I have a whole video on how Allen Iverson is connected to the number 56. His name equaled 56. Everything about him. He got in trouble in high school at the bowling alley. That The name of the bowling alley equaled 56. And bowling alley equals 56. That's why he wore the number 3. Because 3 equals 56. What was the coach? Larry Brown. His name equaled 56. I mean, there was all kinds of stuff with Allen Iverson. The number 56. Also, Flip Saunders equals 180 in Gematria, just like Golden Gate. And if you remember this year, the Minnesota Timberwolves also fired their coach, Tom Thibodeau, who equals 52, just like Wolf. And then he was replaced by Flip Saunders' son, Ryan Saunders. So there's a huge narrative going on here with all of this. And I, I, it's just, it can't be a coincidence that this is the season that they played their last game at the Spectrum. This is also when Michael Jordan, you know, won his first championship when he came back from his retirement. And his retirement was connected to the Major League Baseball strike, right? What was it, 1994? Major League Baseball season. I spelled it wrong, but we'll pull it up here. And the reason I bring this up is because that uh, strike, the, the season ended on August 11th, right? The uh, final games of the season were on August 11th. So Michael Jordan, really, really important to what I'm talking about. I have a bunch of videos I'll leave in the description where I'm talking about Philadelphia and earthquakes and how it syncs up to, you know, this Tisha Bob and whatnot. Also, what's so interesting about Michael Jordan is that, think about his name, Michael Jordan. And if you go way back when, the capital of the country, Jordan, was called Philadelphia. And... It was called Philadelphia until the year 106 AD. Michael Jordan originally retired on the date of 1006, but it was later destroyed by earthquakes. So, once again, just pointing out all of this narrative with earthquake and how it syncs up to Philadelphia. Kevin Garnett has been really synced up to Philadelphia through Moses Malone and Daryl Dawkins and whatnot. Minneapolis also in the 612 area code, 612, and Revelation 612 talks about the great earthquake. So, once again, you know, there, there's something important to why Donald Trump met Kim Jong-un on this date as well, 612, the day that George H.W. Bush was born, then George H.W. Bush died later that year, and then Trump gave his speech about the wall on Kim Jong-un's birthday. You know, think about the Western Wall and Pope and Donald Trump even visiting the Western Wall. And Pope Francis said that Christians don't build walls, they build bridges. And he said that right around the same time that, uh, I'm trying to think what it was, right before he went to Mexico City. And then when he 
And then Mexico City got that big earthquake. What was it? 2000. I'm getting my years mixed up, but they just had a recent giant earthquake on the. It was like on the same day as the same, like in 1985 or something. Can't remember what year it was, but. It was 585 days after Pope Francis visited Mexico City. And 585 is this big number I talked about with earthquake stuff. That's the year that Thals of Miletus, that's when the study of earthquakes began, was 585 BCE. And, you know, just think about that. Pope Francis, we get this giant earthquake in Mexico. Donald Trump wants to build the wall to block the Mexicans. Pope Francis says Christians don't build walls, they build bridges. There's a big riddle here with all of this stuff. The word pontiff means bridge builder. Also, the word pope equals 52, just like wolf, and the word president equals 52, just like the word wolf. And, you know, some could even say Donald Trump's the wolf of Wall Street, right? I just looked up Kevin Garnett's birthday to August 11th, too, and it's, Two months and 23 days. And Flip, Sa Flip Saunders was born on 223, just like Andrew Wiggins. And then he announced his cancer on the 223rd day of the year. And I remembered what else it was. The, the game that they opened up the season against, after Flip Saunders had died, the T-Wolves opened up the season against the Lakers and Kobe Bryant, right? The Philadelphia native. And the total score was even 223 points. So just interesting, Garnett's birthday to 811 is two months, 23 days. A big number connected to Flip Saunders, you know, the synagogue of Satan. That is, you know, the church of Satan is from San Francisco, which has ties to Philadelphia. I'm not going to re-explain that, but it's, it's a lot to do with the Golden Gate Bridge as well. So also, I forgot to point out another 56. Flip Saunders died five months and six days after Kevin Garnett's birthday, even. A lot like 56, right? Kevin Garnett equals 56. Wolf equals 56. Also, going back to uh, this 519 and how it syncs up to August 11th, and two months and 23 days, I don't know why I didn't just didn't think of this, but look what Philadelphia is in Gematria. Philadelphia, 223 even. So, we'll leave the video there. I'll just, like, like I say in all, at the end of a lot of videos, I'm just going to keep following the narrative. I've been following the same narrative for years, and I've talked about how since 2015 it's synced up to Philadelphia a whole lot in regards to earthquakes and bridges. So, definitely interesting. Even... In 2017, when there was an earthquake felt near Philadelphia, right, the 4.1, I talked about how it was probably synced up to the Eagles being in the Super Bowl, and then the Eagles ended up winning the Super Bowl with 41 points, and if you read out Super Bowl, it equals 41, and then on the Ides of March that year, we got the bridge collapse at the FIU University, right, the bridge collapse. And that was on the same day as the San Francisco's 44th mayor's 44th birthday. The word earthquake equals 44. And his he became the mayor four months and four days before the anniversary of the Golden Gate Bridge opening. And the mayor, the current mayor of San Francisco right now, London Breed, was 44 years old at the time. And her birthday also August 11th, like Hulk Hogan, so... You know, synced up to bridges. Today we got the a Chattanooga bridge collapse. And if you go to my blog, I can't tell you how many times I have mentioned something special happening in Chattanooga. And think about how today is the date of 4-1. And we got a bridge collapse, right? And I'm talking about how it's synced up to Philadelphia and whatnot. And... You know, I, I even have this a bunch of posts. It was all about the death of Ralphie May. I predicted the death of Ralphie May, and then Ralphie May did die within the next year of me blogging about it and talking about it. And a big thing was he was connected to the movie The Big Lebowski, and The Big Lebowski is played by Jeff Bridges. 
And then Jeff Bridges would just won that award earlier this year. The uh, Cecil B. DeMille Award. And that was all synced up to bridge and symbolism. So, it's just interesting. We get a, a bridge collapse. I didn't really looked into the story, but a bridge collapse in Chattanooga. And there's a whole lot that goes along with it that I would lose you if I start talking about it. But, you know, it was synced up to the death of my grandma and some other things. So, very, very interesting. Especially the death of Ralphie May. And the movie King Ralph that was, you know, the guy comes from Las Vegas. And this was just after the Las Vegas shooting that Ralphie May died in Las Vegas. Just after I got this weird phone call or weird, you know, a weird phone call from Nevada. And then this other guy reaching out to me, trying to get a hold of me like crazy, who was from Las Vegas. And he supposedly got, he was the guy who got the, perfect showcase ever on the Price is Right that I made a video about and you know he's never got back to me so it just seems odd that he would reach out to me like crazy just before a shooting in Las Vegas and I was talking about all year how that was a special time of the year that we might get some type of big event you know because it was right around the Jesuit anniversary and a lot of things with the priests and molesting kids was going on and you know, the, the Jesuit anniversary is also the day or the night of Pope Francis leaving Philadelphia and in 2015, the night of the blood moon, the fourth of the Tetrad, and Pope Francis supposedly the first Jesuit Pope. And in Revelation 6.12, or just Revelation 6, we'll pull it up really quick. It talks about the the blood moon and then the earthquake right so revelation 6 6 12 i watched as he opened the sixth seal there was a great earthquake the sun turned black like sackcloth made of goat hair the whole moon turned blood red right so just interesting how it all syncs up so We'll leave the video there. Once again, just keep following this narrative. But, you know, the wolf symbolism too is synced up to the moon, right? Think about how wolves howl at the moon. Werewolves turn into werewolves on full moons. This year on January 20th, we got the wolf moon, the blood wolf moon. So definitely interesting, but have a good one. Peace.